right, so we're going to get started with our second part uh, of tonight's webinar. In this section of the webinar, we're going to talk about um, using XLights with cloud-based storage and how you can use one computer to sequence on multiple computers with uh, and some of the challenges associated with that. So if you've watched part one, the, the biggest challenge with part one is uh, that the computer and the laptop, let's say, are uh, not connected, they're not networked, and you need to get all the data from one to the other. Uh, services such as cloud storage-based services, things that you're familiar with, which are Google Drive, uh, Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, iCloud, uh, any number of, the, uh, I mean, there, there's like limitless uh, op options here for, for you to go in and begin using different services. Uh, what we've learned, what I've learned over the past, um, I would say, 12 years is that uh, this cloud-based storage has been a great help in everything that I've done, not just professionally with, with Pixel Pro displays, but also with, uh, with whenever I was in college, it was easy, it was so easy to transfer files. I mean, I, I would spend all day in class, this is 2010, I'd spend all day in class and then I'd get home and all of my homework or all of my stuff had automatically synced up with my desktop. So what we're gonna talk about in this section is um, learning about cloud-based storage and how that's gonna work with inside X lights. The first thing that you're going to do is you're, you're going to, you probably are going to look at doing something like this. So a number of people have already have some services that they utilize. Some, you know, Google offers free for a certain amount. Uh, you, you get it automatically free with your, uh, uh, your Gmail or you get some free because, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, but basically you're installing their um, cloud storage uh, application on uh, your you're installing that on your computer once you install it uh, you're able to easily share between devices uh, that you sign your account into uh, you're, you're able to use your phone and upload documents and emails and such uh, you know not emails but uh, documents from your emails or pictures and such you can easily upload and download from any file location um, Files saved in the designated folder will sync to all devices, uh, but it does require an internet connection. So if, if you have, let's say, for example, a laptop, and that laptop is sitting off uh, in, in your backpack or in your suitcase and you, you're, or, or your briefcase or whatever, and, and you don't use it very much, you only use it whenever you're out on the road for whatever reason. Um, so you... That's one of the things that you want to do is you, you're only going to get the most up-to-date uh, data and syncing whenever that device is connected to the Internet and able to receive that sync data. Uh, files are physically located on your computer's disk drive. One of the things that I heard in the past people have said that, well, I don't want to use cloud-based storage. They have all my files and stuff, and they're not actually on my computer. Well, they actually are on your computer. They're located in a file directly on your hard drive and the only person that is going to delete them or possibly I mean not saying something can happen but the most in most cases the only person that's going to delete them is you so uh, it, it's nice to have these cloud-based storage um, functions that you can you're able to use on different platforms and be able to sync without having to worry about having multiple backups um, Notes about cloud-based storage. Well, generally, the services do come at a price. Generally, they do. Um, I know we pay 12 bucks a month for uh, Dropbox. I've been using Dropbox since 2009. Uh, I am very happy with it. We, we have a subscription to Office 360, and uh, they uh, include one terabyte of storage, and I think we pay like 10 bucks a month or something silly like that. It's, it's like ridiculously low. There are a number of other services. Rob found this this little kind of model, uh, this little page here on the internet. Sent, me, sent it to me earlier, and I thought this is great. I'll add this in. Don't if you're looking for cloud-based storage, you can obviously uh, do a couple Google searches and find uh, a couple different uh, brands if you are looking to do this. Uh, I am not very familiar with uh, how to do this without having cloud-based storage. In other words, 
like a free version. The the free versions that I've seen are, are very limited with capacity, like they give you five terabytes maximum, maybe 10, I don't know, uh, or not terabytes, but uh, gigabytes. So it's, it's, it's enough to kind of get you going, but the longer you're in this and the more files you accrue, uh, you kind of end up jumping in and paying for the service, which I've, I've always a actually, this is one subscription I've, I've always been happy to pay for because it's been ridiculously helpful. Another thing, as I said, these files are stored on your computer. So it's important that your computer has the available storage to take full advantage of it. If, if it doesn't, that's okay. You're just limited to how much you can save on that computer by how big that hard drive or that secondary drive is in the system. For example, if your laptop, let's say, has a 500 gigabyte uh, hard drive, but your service allows for one terabyte, you can only synchronize or sync so many, uh, so much data or so many files into your 500 gigabyte drive. It doesn't turn your drive into a bigger drive. It it just limits you to what you're able to download. And then uh, whenever you're Whenever you get, let's say, sufficiently full, uh, or your your capacity begins to fill on that drive, they'll they will send you a notification saying uh, your system is full. Please upgrade your hard drive, or add. You're going to need to create more storage, or you're going to have to clear out some files. One or the other, make arrangements. In in other words. Now let's kind of talk about XLights and cloud storage services. Basically, I wanted to show you that we, since we do use Dropbox, this is what we do use. We set the default storage location to the exact same location on all our computers. I'm a, I'm a computer goofball. I love computers, so I have a show computer. It's across the room over there, and I only run it for the show. I have a secondary backup computer. It's in another room, and it 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 literally only runs whenever um, I need to do a lot of rendering. So it's the second computer uh, that I can just render a bunch of sequences on and I can keep working on my main desktop. So all of these are set up exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if I'm sitting here or I'm sitting over at my show computer or I'm sitting uh, in the other room where my uh, backup computer is. I can open and I can render any sequence on any one of those computers, just as Rob can from his house, he can open and render any of our sequences from his computer desktop, my computer desktop, any any of the computers on our network, we're all set up the exact same. And the reason for this is we use what we call, what, well, what is called the D drive. We use a secondary internal storage drive, and we added these after building our system. If you have a laptop, some laptops can't have a secondary hard drive added to them. But if the drive is sufficiently large, you may be able to do something called partitioning. Now, I'm not going to teach how to partition a hard drive. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that teach you how to do that. But suffice to say, you could partition your hard drive, an existing hard drive, and allocate so many gigabytes to that that will allow you to store your XLite sequences on them. So this is a rather advanced process. I, again, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole, but it is an option. If, you're, if, if you need to or you'd like to do that, you're able to. So here's a few notes on default storage location. You can use the C drive, C colon backslash and, for example, Dropbox. It could be, uh, I, I will say Dropbox because that's what I use, but um, you could also say OneDrive or any of the other iCloud or uh, Amazon, whatever you want, to, whatever whatever server it is, is just replace it with that. So one of the things that I have learned in the past, I have learned to avoid using the my documents folder or my desktop folder because the name of your PC, whenever you create it, or whenever you open or, or you set up a new PC, you typically have to give that PC a name. And this actually creates a user in Windows. Well, as you can see here, I have three different names. And this is why this is important. And this is why it's challenging in order to use uh, these uh, cloud-based storage so that you can synchronize across different locations. We typically avoid using these uh, the documents or the desktop folder or the My Pictures or whatever 
desktop type folder that you want to use. And the reason we avoid this is, is because when you create your computer's name, whenever you boot up Windows and you give it a name or you give it a profile, it gives you a C colon users and then under the users it gives you a name that you're going to be working under. That way you're accessing your files and if somebody else is a different user and they switch users, then they have a C users somebody else. And in this instance, these are the three uh, the three computers that I have here uh, at my house. I have what I call PPD main. That happens to be this computer that I'm teaching from tonight. The second one here, it says uh, R-E-L-X-E. Uh, totally misspelled it whenever I was setting it up, but that's okay. Life goes on. And, and it was, uh, it, this is my show computer. Um, and then you, you see where I have desktop, Dropbox, X lights. Um, then here you see I have users, Leechburg Lights, which is my show name, which is the uh, backup computer that I have to uh, run uh, any any kind of uh, 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 sequence rendering that I need to do. Um, so I have three different file paths, and this is the problem with using the documents and the desktop folder locations for your uh, cloud storage base. The reason this is a challenge is because XLights uses different folder path names, and whenever it does, you're not going to be able to find the related files that go with the sequence. So if I open up, if, if we used documents or desktop as our home location, this is the problem or the challenge that you'll face with. Um, if you're using something that's inside Windows, what will happen is if you go from your PPD main to Leechburg Lights, those two folders are two different computers. You go from one computer to another. One computer will have this file structure on it right here. And then the other computer, whenever you open it, will have this file structure here. And it will not be able to find, it will not be able to find the shaders, the video files, and the uh, images that are attached to the original sequence. And what you will have to do is a lot of referencing for those just to make them work. Now, is it hard? No. But it creates a frustration for a lot of users, especially people who are not as computer savvy as others. Xlights does record the last known location and file path. Uh, opening up a sequence on a different computer with a different file path will cause issues. Broken file paths now now, thanks to the most recent versions of XLights last year of 2021, there uh, it will prompt you with an error saying unable to find uh, this this specific these list of files or these images or these videos. Please run a check sequence for a complete list, and it gives you a couple. So XLights will now prompt you whenever it opens if it if it can't find or it has broken file paths that it can't find. Finally, if you do hit the render button, anything that renders is red means it can't be found. That means images, pictures, and shaders. So I, I know it's, it's kind of a downfall if you are computer challenged, but the, the upside is, is that uh, if you are good with computers, the more you work with them, it can be rather successful for you. So, and whenever I say long-term success, I do talk about Rob having his computer and me having mine. And for the past five years, we've been able to easily share files back and forth because we have a shared file that we run all of our sequences into. He's able to open and render as well as I am, and it doesn't matter who's using what computer. Now, I will say as a pro and con, which I did not add in here, that I will say that one of the cons, I'll start with the cons, because if I open up a sequence and I make a change to it and I have it open on my machine and Rob opens up his opens up the exact same sequence and makes a change on it on his machine there's no way for me to know that he's doing that so it's probably a good idea that one person only edits one type of document if you're in one layout and somebody else is in the in the other layout you don't want to you don't want to be making changes because if I make a change and he makes a change, whoever saved the save button last, their change is going to be saved. So that's a con. I will say that. I, I, I didn't. I kind of forgot to bring that out. But um, a couple of the pros 
absolutely the biggest, without a doubt, hands down pro is automatically syncing files. It, it You never need to manually transfer a file like ever. Anytime you want to share something, you can um, typically do a right click and uh, select a file and copy a drop a Dropbox link or a link to it and share it with anybody. And it's it's super easy. It's really nice to have it. Again, open, render, and save on any uh, sequence on on any computer across any of our devices. As long as it's set up identically on all machines, it does work and works very well. Some services offer backup protection. That's a that's another thing. If, if you need to retrieve lost or uh, misdeleted files, you're able to go back and do that. I did that one year with my... Um, I did that one year with in 2010 or 2011 with my Lightarama sequences. I, I went in and I deleted the file folder on Dropbox and I didn't realize it because my Dropbox was getting full. I wasn't paying for the service. That was 2011. I, I wasn't paying for the service and I deleted a whole branch with nothing but all my 2010 sequences. And luckily, over at my mother's house, my mother had I'd taken over to her house a, a backup computer, and I was running a nice little show in her yard, and it was synchronized with, with it wasn't synchronized, it was turned off for the season, and I was able to get all of my sequences off of that computer. Thank goodness I didn't connect it to the internet or, or erased it, but, but that was definitely a, a, a positive thing, having multiple computers with that. So uh, back to the cons. So most cloud storage services charge a monthly fee. They can be confusing for folks who are much more computer challenged that's just the way it is you know if you want to do the, the the fancy stuff take your time with setting it up as we talked about earlier and make sure you have sufficient storage adding a second storage drive is is a big deal it, it i that's how we've set up ours it works very well for us it's i definitely recommend doing that the the nice thing is is having a second storage drive you're not worried about overfilling your computer's main or your laptop's main hard drive and if you're able to do that then by all means uh, then, then you're uh, you're able to expand as as large as you need to. And computers, obviously, too. This is kind of a con. If the computers are not online, they won't sync. So at this point, my laptop is in my backpack, and I have no need to get it out because I'm not planning on making any trips until we go to St. Louis and to, until we go to the Florida Mini. So I hope to see you all there. Whenever it comes time to go, I need to open up my laptop like two or three days ahead of time and let it download all of the changes and updates and so forth. So that, that's the one kind of downside to uh, not having everything kind of set up. If you uh, do have a laptop, you keep offline for a while. Uh, with that, that is the end of using cloud storage with, within X-Lights. Let me know if you have any questions. By all means, go ahead and unmute your microphone.